speaker of this session, our uh, pretty colleague, Dr. Suzanne Sayed. She is a consultant uh, rheumatologist uh, who worked uh, previously in uh, USA where she got her uh, degree there. And she had her master's degree in public health uh, at Emory University. Dr. Suzanne now is working in Jordan Hospital and her main interest is systemic lupus erythromatosis and rheumatoid arthritis. She has contributed to multiple researches, including radius one and radius two, and she will talk today about granulomatous mastitis. Welcome, Dr. Suzanne. Good morning. This is a lighter subject from uh, antiphospholipid, and I hope everybody is having a good time in Jordan, our visitors. Uh, my talk today is about uh, something that got my attention recently here in the last two years in Jordan, idiopathic agromatous mastitis. It is uh, a disease that I encountered in the last two years and got my attention how much as a rheumatologist we can contribute to this disease. So let me start by telling you about my first patient who came to my clinic was this. She came from breast clinic for uh, breast nodule. We told her we don't do the breasts here. This is the wrong clinic. But she said, no, listen, I have this painful nodule on my breast, and I've been having low-grade fever, joint pain, fatigue, and I had this weird rash coming on my legs in the last week. She's Pyra 3, Gravida 3. Her last pregnancy was four years ago. She breastfed her last child for 12 months. Actually, she breastfed all of her kids between 12 to 18 months, and she's healthy. She really never been on any medications, not even birth control pills. So her exam showed a very tender nodule. The breast was um, inflamed, and she also had a very tender nodule with skin overlying, skin inflammation, skin fistula was discharged, a pus-like discharge. She had joint pain, but no synovitis for her ankles and knees, and she also had erythema nodosum on the anterior tibia. She showed me her labs. Her labs pretty much negative, except for high elevated uh, CRP in, in the 50 and elevated ESR. The, the breast clinic, very unusual, uh, ran actually tests for other gametous diseases, including just x-ray, ANA, and ANCA. All of them were negative. As you expect, she had a mammogram, breast ultrasound, which showed non-specific density. Breast biopsy report showed gametous mastitis, bacterial and fungal culture is negative, and a note from breast surgeon telling me, this is idiopathic rheumatoid mastitis for you to treat. So um, I had to go back and look at the, what, what is this. And it, it is um, actually, um, it, it, it is a rare benign disfiguring chronic inflammatory disease of the breast. It was first described by Kessler and Walsh, both of them pathologists, in Tel Aviv University. So actually it was described first time in the, from this area. It affects women of childbearing age. He was history of breastfeeding. Histopathology is essential to make a definitive diagnosis and eliminate any disease mimickers, such as uh, sarcoidosis. So it starts as unilateral, painful, solid breast mass in healthy young women, uh, rarely bilateral. Most of the time, we see it unilateral. We had one patient actually had it one in uh, one breast and moved to a second breast, but we've never seen it in both at the same time. The time interval can go from the last birth, childbirth can go from one to 15 years. It can be accompanied by regional lymphadenopathy in 30% of cases. This is a picture. It's very much similar to, what, to the patient that came to my clinic. It, you can see there is a nodule. Oh. Do you, see, do you see the nodule right here in the fistula, and the whole breast is inflamed. Uh, it doesn't affect the nipple area, but can affect any, any part of the breast. And you get the skin inflammation overlying the skin nodule. And the skin sinus, like it, this, it was uh, post like a discharge. It can be accompanied the most of the time with systemic symptoms, fatigue, low-grade fever, uh, joint pain, small and large, uh, erythema nodosum less than 10%, and you find elevated serum inflammatory markers, ESR and CRP. As you expect, with anybody with a breast nodule, you start with mammogram, ultrasound, and it's a very non-specific density. If you want to be sophisticated, you're going to get an MRI, which also very non-specific. Um, 
the diagnosis is always by biopsy, is the gold standard for diagnosis. The pathology usually shows lobulocentric non caseating cryoloma with lymphocytic and neutrophilic infiltrate. You have to exclude other gametous diseases. You have to do your homework by doing by ruling out uh, other diseases. And this is a this is actually um, a, st a picture of mammogram where you see non specific density, non specific density run here, and this is a normal one, and this is. Uh, you see a multinucleated giant cell with a lot of inflammatory cells. The same here, you see caseating cryoloma with a lot of inflammatory cells around that. The treatment, so far, if, when we reviewed the old studies, and most of them, the case reports or case studies, no, we don't have randomized controlled uh, trial just because it's not common. We found that uh, at the beginning, they used to do surgical approach. Uh, mastectomy, partial mastectomy, then they uh, moved to lumpectomy, just because they thought at the beginning this is really not a benign condition. But then once they realized that, they start using antibiotics despite negative culture, no culture positive. In the last 10 years, corticosteroid has been introduced uh, in uh, many centers. And they found that there's a good uh, response from the steroid. Immunosuppression has been added recently as a steroid sparing agent. Methotrexate and Imuran is the most common. Mycophenolate nofotil, I found one case from Harvard, they used that in combination with steroid and actually they control the disease. But when you look at all these cross the studies, you don't see any clear treatment strategy just because it's not common disease. So what causes IgM? If I want to look at the side on the treatment, we'll have to know, really, we don't know what causes it. We know that there's a very positive, clear association with pregnancy and lactation. Uh, response to steroid can point to autoimmune origin. Uh, there's other theories, but none of them really proven to be true. Infection, elevated prolactin level, alpha and one antitrypsin deficiency, oral contraceptives. Ethnicity is not known. We don't know what the prevalence of this. We know for sure it's a very common among Latin and Asian women. Because there are fewer cases in, your, in, in Western countries, it was a fewer case studies. Majority came actually, the large number of patients came from Asia, Turkey, Iran, India. We've done actual review, but just for the sake of the time, I'm not going to go through this one. But you can see, actually, most of them, the largest numbers came from Turkey, from uh, uh, Ireland, very few. USA, you find this 54 uh, patients, but actually came from USC University, which is uh, Los Angeles, mostly Hispanic population. They did not actually point, uh, decide, they did not put, um, you know, uh, the ethnicity, but I assume it's a Los Angeles. So uh, you find that uh, uh, majority, in the previous study, majority of them actually uh, had uh, children. I'm going to go quickly here because you, uh, this is the regular investigation presentation. Majority presented with a, a breast nodule. The treatment, as you see, it's very um, all over. You have patients at the beginning who used uh, surgery, then they introduced methotrexate and prednisolone and different treatment with steroids and antibiotics, some of them for steroids. Which, you know, uh, the follow-up is very short. I want to stop on this one. Actually, this is just published a few months ago. It's a, uh, it is a Turkish uh, uh, working group, mastitis working group from Turkey in collaboration with the center of Pittsburgh. Actually, the physician in Pittsburgh, Atila Soran, is Turkish. So, uh, but the majority of patients came actually from, all the patients came from Turkey. It's the largest so far retrospective study with 720 patients included from 22 breast centers between 2001 and 2016. They looked at patient demographic, clinical, radiologic, treatment, and recurrence of IgM. They excluded male patients, tuberculosis, and breast carcinoma. And if you look at that, you find that their median age 36, as you expect, young woman. And the follow-up was very short, only 16 months. Um, majority, 92% of them uh, had given birth, breastfed, 85%. Very few of them used uh, over, um, oral contraceptives. And smoker, 20%, uh, 24%, and 85% were healthy. 
when the, uh, they reviewed their treatment, uh, only medical 36%, surgery and medical 33, medical and surgery 23, so majority they used medicine and surgery. Uh, not only 1% um, only underwent mastectomy and 8% had kind of surgery, which means we're more and more toward using steroids and using uh, immunosuppression for that. Uh, the medical treatment was uh, antibiotic, 37%, although it doesn't work, 40% steroid, steroid and antibiotic, 13%, and 1% is methotrexate. When you look at the steroid, it triple therapy, they just cover everything. They don't know what they're covering, they just want to cover all kind of infection. So uh, well, the, the summary of the study, it's a median age of patient correlated with previous studies. A young woman uh, who uh, uh, given birth, it also showed there's a very strong uh, association with pregnancy breastfeeding. They had a previous breast infection in their uh, study, although it did not show in previous uh, case control studies. Uh, um, no association was found with systemic disease or oral contraceptives. Limitation, it's very limited because it's retrospective. They had to go back and search the data. Uh, it's a very limited follow-up. And because it, most of them came from breast clinic, they really did not do any serologic testing. They um, really relied on their needle biopsy and pathology. And they did not mention if patients had any systemic symptoms with that. So what are we doing here in Jordan? We realized actually so far we have nine patients over only two years from one center in Jordan. And when I asked my colleagues, most of them had seen one or two or even more cases of aromatous mastitis. Um, this actually, we're working at this point with, in collaboration with the breast clinic in Jordan Hospital. And we're trying to establish specific variables and characteristics to study this uh, disease. Uh, maybe we need to see these patients in our clinic, not in the breast clinic, because uh, we are much better in using steroid and, uh, and DMARDs than breast clinics, and we can actually approach this as a systemic disease and do all work up. What we're trying to do is prevent this disfiguring disease. Uh, this is really uh, traumatic for a patient, young, young woman, and, uh, uh, you know, if, if it just doesn't happen, then it's mastectomy. So we're trying to, me maybe we can approach this. We have nine patients so far, all of them treated medically, and all of them resolved within, say, between three months to one year with no complications. So thank you for listening. I'd like usually to finish with Petra, because it's interesting. Thank you, Dr. Thank Suzanne, you. for this nice and interesting talk. Is no, there is any questions? Just uh, stop it. Dr. Badia, I just need to stop. Shukran, uh, Suzanne. Very interesting. And I have uh, cases, but uh, the most important point is that if you do surgery, they would not heal, and this uh, don't heal, it won't not heal, and usually the recurrence. It's a recurrent. Uh, it's a recurrent. If you do surgery, we found that uh, uh, we had one patient that actually came from Palestine, and um, they did uh, multiple. Uh, incision and drainage. And the moment it's like any, when you do crematis and cryoloma, uh, once you put uh, surgery, when you start surgical in, uh, incision, it just, uh, you open huge, you know, uh, wound. And even if you treat there, it comes back in a different one. But our patients, the one that we kept on methotrexate like for one year, we didn't have recurrence. We have like a year and a half, two years now, and they had no recurrence. We had one patient came from France, uh, actually was living in France um, five years ago, and she had it in one breast. And at the time, they treated her with incision and antibiotics, and it, she, it was very painful. Finished six months after six months. She came here, and the last four years, the last three months, she developed in the breast. We treated her with steroid with no incision. We don't want anybody to touch the skin. It's just very inflamed skin. I just want to mention that the wounds which not heal, you usually heal with the steroid. And you give them steroid and the, you, you heal the wound. You see, I have a patient bilateral breast and they have many uh, operations on the wounds. And the wounds not heal. 
except after using طبعا they do not uh, diagnose here and after using steroid they won't heal. Exactly, exactly. That's why I said we need to have them come to our clinic, not the breast clinic. Once the breast clinic make that diagnosis, they need to come back to rheumatology. And I hope, hope that we can have more answer because it's more common in this area, actually. We have not seen it in the States. It's very rare there. Like, uh, like I said, there's seven cases in Buffalo, New York, the rheumatology, and they did the, uh, medical treatment in Buffalo, New York, and really uh, they had a, a good resolution with no surgery. So hopefully we see these patients more often here. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the end of uh, our first session for the second day of the conference.